Hey guys, it's r 3 MJ. I'm coming back to you with another vlog. I know I haven't done one of these in a while, but I figured I'd start up with this again. Um, so I figured I'd start with a recap of my life so far. You know, the past few months have been good. Um, my relationship with my dad is starting to get better. It, you know, it's been pretty bad the past six years, but um, I, I kind of felt, you know, I, I wasn't really getting anything out of fighting with him. I was just kind of doing what he was doing to me. And, um, you know, I was just going to keep losing every 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 single battle, you know, he w he doesn't defend me with anything, and I just kind of wish, you know, he'd do that more, but, you know, everything's been pretty good lately, um, and not just with my dad, everything so far, um, you know, my nana got Alzheimer's earlier in the year, and she's, oh, she's doing good, um, you know, she, uh, there are times where her memory will affect her, for sure, she definitely has had problems, but all we do is encourage her, because that's what needs to happen. We want to be able to push her so that she can get better in any possible way. Keep her memory alive as much as, as, much as we can. Um, you, it's really important that we do this because of the fact she's so important to my family. And we want to keep making memories with her as much as we possibly can. Um, so yeah, she, she's been doing good. Um... So, I also wanted to talk about what today is, if any Michael Jackson fans know what today is. It's the 13th anniversary of when Michael was in Times Square um, promoting his album Invincible. He was doing a record signing, and I'll pull up the picture in a minute. Um, you know, th this was an important album. This was, it, it debuted at number one. It definitely wasn't his most successful album, especially because you can't compare it to Thriller or Bad, Off the Wall, any of those. Especially because Thriller has sold over 110 million copies since this released in 1982. Um, but yeah, Invisible was a good album. This was considered as Michael's comeback album because he hadn't had a studio album in six years in 1995 with History, Past, Present, and Future Book 1. So this was an important album. You know, it had the comeback single, You Rock My World. And unfortunately, it didn't reach number one. But, you know, it's not a big deal. The last number one Michael had in this country was You Not Alone. It was the first song to debut at number one. But his last number one single was in 1997 in the UK with Blood on the Dance Floor. And that too was a good song. He dedicated that to Elizabeth Taylor. That might have been the album, but either way. Um, so yeah, it, it was an important day because it was so crazy there. Times Square was crowded. There was so much traffic. Everyone, all the fans just went completely crazy. And he interacted them with them as much as he could. I also wanted to talk about how recently, in the past few days, Tom Snedden died. And if you don't know who he is, he was the prosecutor in the Michael Jackson trial. And in 1993, before when there was supposed to be a trial, he was going to prosecute Michael then too. But I'm mixed about this. Like, I'm happy that he died. But at the same time, you know, I send my condolences to his family, his loved ones. Um, this is important for me and all the Michael fans because of the fact Michael already had to go through hell during that time, and Tom Sutton just seemed to enjoy it. You know, he wanted to go after Michael, and he wanted to ruin him. It was as simple as that. So, I am pretty convinced he'll end up in hell. Um, I don't mean to sound like a jerk, trust me. But, um, I just think what he was doing, he, he, he just, he wasn't a nice guy. He didn't really have a lot of evidence to prove that Michael was guilty of anything. So that's obviously why they lost. I also wanted to talk about Robin Williams. As everyone knows, he, he killed himself three months ago. And, you know, suicide these days is a very sensitive topic for anyone. Especially with comedians, because they're... You might think they're so happy because of how funny they are, but they really lead trouble lives. They're really depressed. At least they tend to be. And that's what Rob Williams was going through in his final days. Um, you know, he, we didn't, no one knew that he had Parkinson's. And um, it, he just had a final autopsy report. And that's kind of why I'm talking about him now. And that said, there was no drugs or alcohol, anything in his system. They could basically figure out that he was suffering from Parkinson's and paranoia and depression. So, I was so shocked when I found out about his death because I grew up watching his movies. You know, I probably my favorite ones. I loved 
the Night at the Museum movies. I'm really happy that it's going to be a third one. It is going to be weird seeing it next month, knowing that he is in it. And they finished filming it in April. So, this is just four months before he committed suicide. It was either April or May. One of those. It was definitely during the springtime. So, you know, it's pretty shocking. There were two movies he finished and two that weren't quite finished yet. So, kind of curious how how, the, how, how all of this is going to work. You know, and I was obsessed with Aladdin when I was little. I loved him as the genie and everything. And he, he was an iconic actor and comedian. I loved him. He, he was amazing. He made he was. And I also wanted to talk about channel news. So, I, you know, as you know, I uh, uploaded movie scores, updated ones of the Spider-Man trilogy, Titanic, and the Karate Kid trilogy. And this basically has, in certain ones, is more pictures and videos, um, alternate tracks. And, um, you know, I just think movie scores, in my opinion, are underrated. I think a lot of people should really appreciate them more instead of talking about music with actual lyrics. I think people should appreciate the ones without them. Because, at least for me, you know, I have a photographic memory. So, I'm able to tell with certain films when that scene happened. If I listen to, like, the Spider-Man music, I know what scene it was when that certain music played. Same with Titanic, same with the Karate Kid trilogy. And, um... I just think it's really important, especially for our generation. People tend to not listen to that type of music. I really wish people would more. So I really encourage you to check out these videos. I'm not saying you have to like pay your ten, you know, pay close attention to. Them. You just have to listen. You don't need to look at the pictures. I don't care. Okay, it's just to help people who might not know what scene it was. When it comes to Spider-Man Three, it's two and a half hours. I don't expect you to sit there and listen to it in two and a half hours. Okay, I don't even do that. When I listen to them, because I, I still listen to, to the ones I made. It could take me, like, a couple of days to just listen to all seven. It doesn't matter. Because I don't listen to them every single day, but I try to. So, I definitely want to be working on more videos, specifically vlogs. Because I feel like, you know, in the past I've seen the videos, and I don't know if I'm really going to do those again. I got so much hate, and it's not like it brings me down. But no one's just really going to appreciate that. So, whatever. So, I, I still want to do more vlogs just to you know, keep in touch more with my subscribers and fans, and it's really important that I do that as a YouTuber, and, um, I really encourage you guys to subscribe, whether you're subscribed or not, um, and I really am really happy that you guys watch my videos. I've got almost 250 subscribers, I've got, like, around 64,000 views total, there's probably even more now, but... I'm, you know, I'm really proud. I, over the past three and a half years, I've been making videos. I'm surprised that the most popular videos is the Michael Jackson series. And I have been thinking about continuing that. I'm not so sure. Um, because, you know, again, I don't know if that's really going to encourage people to really believe he's alive. And it really doesn't mean that much to me. You know, he'll tell the truth when he's ready. And, um, it's something that no one should try to push him for. So, I think I'm just going to end it with that, and I'll see you guys when I see you. Bye.